for him and a lot of the other people, that's the mindset uh, that I create. Uh, people say that, you know, we have a term out there, I work for you. So oh, that's a good slogan. But that, with my businesses over the years, I always felt like I worked for my employees. Before I did this job, I had 1,200 employees, but I felt I invert my organizations. I worked for them, helped them be successful in case I heard 30, 40 years ago, help other people be successful and you'll be successful. That's how my wife and I, 43 years of marriage, she's put up with it. We built our businesses, having people have a plan, work the plan, that ties into the organization at large. So with that, let's open it up to whatever questions you have. I'm glad to take that, but I'd also like to get your, your thoughts on what we should be focused on. We're coming into the session the next three or four months. I wanted this to be as uh, productive as we can. And uh, the bottom line, I will mention one other thing to you, which you probably might know or not know, but partisan bills in Congress over the last 30 years, uh, nine bills have been passed. If we don't work together, you get zero. I've had 17, 18 different initiatives become law, but you have to have a Democrat on the other side. It's different than Tallahassee. The House, Senate, the governorship, one party. But up in Washington, you've got to find a way to reach across the aisle. That's why, you know, you talk to anybody, members of Ford and others, uh, I'm probably one of the most, if not the most, bipartisan because I'm looking for opportunities. You know, we're not going to cave on everything, but things that we can do together. So let me just throw that out there. With that, let's just open it up. Sally, if she, Sally's here, then we've got someone over here too. So we've got two people with lights. Uh, Go ahead. Hey. Hey, uh, Matt Melton from Siesta Key. Uh, thanks, thanks for being here. Thanks for, for hosting this forum. Uh, my question is around, uh, around Red Tide. Uh, last summer was devastating, both for the environment and for the economy. Uh, and I was also here in 04, um, a military leave on Henry Island, and saw a devastating effect to, to the island and the community. I uh, want to know what's happening both at the, the federal level and at the, the local level to, to help understand what's happening and help mitigate those impacts. Let me just say up front, uh, a good environment is good for business. And when I chaired the chamber here locally in this region, that was the thing. Good life, good business. And that water quality, in my mind, is, is critical. When I grew up in Michigan, we one of the Great Lakes, Lake Erie, was so polluted, if you caught a fish, you couldn't eat it. Uh, it was full of mercury. And the whole thing with red tide, it's a phenomenon that's been out there for a lot of years, hundreds of years, but it's got a lot more, so we've got to make sure we do everything we can. Just announced today, you can look at the uh, Herald Tribune, uh, we've got another million nine or million eight for research. I had a bill, we got eight million. On a lot of uh, algae bloom, we got another hundred million. So, it has been the worst bout that I've seen, and I agree with you, and by the way, thanks for your service, but uh, it's been one of the worst bouts that we've had. But all of us working together, I think Ron DeSantis, uh, Bill Galvano, I think they had $12 million. So my mindset with the scientist is, I don't have all the answers. You talk to 10 different people, they'll give you 10 different reasons. I said, you figure out the science, we'll, and then we'll get you the money to try to minimize it. And I think, you know, when, uh, when you look at Florida, it was 7 million people in 1970, I think, and today it's 21 million. So that's got to be a factor. There's a lot of other factors probably involved. But we're on it. We're relentless. Without quality water, you've got nothing. And I don't even, if you look at Lake Okeechobee, and you see pictures of that with the algae there, like Wakabole, and it's on CNN, it's a disaster, not just for them, but it's a disaster for state and so we have to continue to work together with the mayor and everybody else in terms of red tide. My name is Pat Alfred. I live in Bradenton. Um, I'm a retired clinical social worker. Donald Trump's administration continues to separate children from their parents at the southern border. I find this a humanitarian catastrophe. Um, psychologists, psychologists have been saying this is causing lasting trauma and damage to these children, and I can vouch for the fact 
that this kind of separation at such an early age will do that, and it will cause trauma to the parents as well. Many have gotten sick. Some have even died. Do you agree with Donald Trump's policy and the separation? And why don't we see action from the Congress to help these children and parents grow up? One month, uh, we had 100,000 coming to the border. Uh, Guatemala, I met with the members of parliament in Guatemala, which is just south of there, as many of you know. One country, one small country. I asked three members from the member of parliament, I said, how many people northbound to our border did you have in 2018? They said 150,000. That's not an exaggeration. You can go find out from them. but. Central and South America, there's a lot of challenges there. The reason they're moving because they don't have opportunities. And also, there's a whole group of people that make money off of putting people up, the, up to the borders, I think, uh, for various reasons. So it's a big, big challenge, the border. Uh, I think, uh, you know, it's not just people coming over our southern border, it's also people coming into our airports in Tampa and Orlando which you call visa overstays, and they don't want to come back. And so it's, it's, it's a big issue, but my point is, I think they're trying to do the best they can. The surge has been incredible. That's just my opinion. I don't know. I've been, I've been, I've been, I've been to El Paso. But it's 10 times, you know, the amount of traffic at the border is 10 times greater than it's been. And I've been to El Paso. I mean, you can go down there and check it out yourself. Talk to people that are on the ground. That's the reality. I have been to Holmes. Sir, we have another question up here. Go ahead. Hi, Jim Lee from Sarasota. I'm the president of Million Purpose for the local solar contractor. And I am respectfully requesting that you support the extension of the federal tax credit for renewable energy. For the yeah, I think that's something that we're looking at. I think there's bipartisan support. Uh, frankly, I was a tax chairman of the subcommittee last year when we passed uh, tax reform. But yeah. the bottom line, that's an area that I think there's. Uh, we can work across the aisle with that. Richie Neal, who chairs, as a Democrat from Massachusetts, which chairs Ways and Means, I work very closely with him, and that's one of the things. Also, I don't even know if it's public, but we're, we're looking at in Manatee County, building a very large battery capability uh, in terms of that. It, you know, there's a lot of solar projects going on, so I think it makes a lot of sense to get a balance of energy sources going forward. And I'll be as excited as anybody when we have more solar capability uh, than we do now. But there's been a lot of investment in this area. I think it's something that's going to continue to happen. Okay. Barbara Drake uh, from Bradenton, uh, 34209. Uh, my question to you, uh, Summit, uh, President Trump lobbied for Russia to be readmitted to the group. But Russia interfered with our election, 2016, and other elections as well, plus he invaded Crimea, uh, violating Ukraine's sovereignty. Do you agree with President Trump's uh, friendly embrace of Russia at the G7? I you know, I'm not totally familiar with that, but I, 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 would, say this, I, I, would, I would say this, that you can't trust Russia. I was just in Armenia uh, a couple of months back because I work with these various emerging democracies. Myself, there's 20 of us that are on a commission. 
Uh, and they're active and engaged in a lot of uh, elections around the world, in my opinion. Uh, and I'm sure they're active and engaged here, uh, not here locally, but just in terms of uh, the U.S. And I think they can be trusted, and we've got to do everything we can to continue to be uh, very focused on making sure they're not engaged. I can tell you that you know every country that I Ukraine that I was just got back from Ukraine to, all these countries, uh, the Russians are very active, and we're very active. Frankly, we have groups that we support in terms of democracy. We want to make sure at the end of the day, people are heard in terms of their their vote. Thank you. We got, got a couple of minutes to go around so we stuff. Hi, I'm Cynthia Ross. I live in Parish. Uh, and um, your website lists eight legislative issues, but not one of them focuses on the global climate crisis, especially as it affects Florida. For me, it should be at the top of your list. Our futures and those of our children and grandchildren depend on how we address this crisis today. We don't have much time. We're already late. But we have to take action now. So what is your plan? What will you do to safeguard our future? And I'm not just focusing on red tide, on the larger issues that are causing global sea rise and warming and catastrophic storms. You might look also when uh, they talked about us pulling out of the Paris Accords. I was against that. And I think because of... as a peninsula, we can be impacted as much as anywhere in the world, especially as it relates to the Wagner, Manatee County, it's a big, could be a big factor here, there's enough science out there, so I think it's something clearly we need to stay focused on, and I took that position, it wasn't a popular position, maybe one of six Republicans, but it was the right decision. It's a paradise. I think it's the best place on the planet. Southwest Florida, from 
look at the Manatee especially, down to Naples, this area. But we've got to make sure if we're going to uh, continue to build and grow, and there's, like it or not, there's 1,200 people here moving the day. But we've got to make sure the infrastructure and the roads and the construction business make sure they pay their fair share. Chamber of Commerce in that because it supports businesses and the city of Redmond is very strong. Enough. 